This gentleman was in a very unfortunate situation on Friday. I'm sure he feels terrible about it. He is a good good guy. I want to at least catch up with him and see how he's feeling after it all and, and where we go from here. It's the one and only Matt Mitrione. Hi, Matt. What's, what's up, brother? How are you, Luke? You've had an interesting weekend, huh? Yeah, a little bit, a little more, a uh, little more interesting than uh, than I than I expected it to be. A little bit, a little bit nuts, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you were gonna do something. I didn't know what it was gonna be, but I knew you were gonna do something. All right, so let's get to it here for just a second. Um, the fight kind of is self-explanatory, I suppose. You were trying to throw a kick, uh, I guess, to the inside of his leg, and it just what? It overlapped the top of the, or the bottom half of his waist. How would you explain what happened? Yeah. Um, I mean, really, like he—he, he, uh, I think I said it like after the uh, after the fight, he—he—he he, he was he threw uh, one body jab before he threw another body jab, had to lower his level, came in, and when he saw the the kick coming in, he kind of rolled his hips in. Um, so it was it was a, it was it was I was intending it to land on his mid to upper thigh, uh, which and because because primarily it takes away a check, and also it's really sensitive up there. It's a really delicate area of your of your body. Uh, and those kicks make a lot of a lot of difference uh, as far as power generation um, and and, uh, and tenderness. So that was part of my plan. Go ahead and touch on his legs. And I felt like he was sitting back a lot. I felt like he was sitting on his rear leg. Uh, and um, I kind of felt like everything he did was rather telegraphed pretty quickly. So I, I thought I'd be able to touch his legs a little bit, uh, get him to be a little bit more tender about throwing that body jab, and then uh, and then kind of act from there. All right, so the kick landed. Did you know it was bad when it landed? Did you know, like, ooh, that was bad? No, I've never kicked him in the nuts before. Um, and uh, so I didn't really know if it was, like, a normal kick or not. I have, I have no idea, like, as far as how it landed. I know I've got some 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 juice on my leg kicks, you know, so I don't know, like, if a normal cup can absorb that or not. I think most – and I actually thought most fighters wore tie cups where there were steel cups, so that something like that wouldn't happen. But um, – yeah, man, it, it it sucks. It's it's apparently he got a hemorrhoid out of it out of the deal. He was in the, from what I understand, he was in he was, when he was on the floor of the cage, he was um writhing around and saying that one felt soft, that it felt flat. Um and then and that's why I was like, all right, well, if that's the case, it's not gonna go any further. He's not gonna fight anymore. And then uh, and that's that's the reason why he waved it off after like twenty or thirty seconds of, of writhing around. Now, what did you hear about his physical condition? We saw him the next day on the broadcast. He seemed to be in better spirits. I know he was in the hospital and out and then got readmitted. What what all have you heard? Hmm. Well, I heard that uh, heard that it was uh, there was, there was a little bit of swelling, not much, but a little bit that they got uh, released with like some ibuprofen or something like that for some for, for some discomfort, uh, and then went home that night or went back to the hotel that night, and then went back the next morning and said he had a lot of pain. Uh, once he stretched out his leg or something like that. And, um, and that's when they found a hemorrhoid, I guess. How do you get a hemorrhoid from a ball kick, man? You know, that's a really good question. I don't know enough about like the internal internalization of, 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 uh, of internal intestinal power or whatever. I don't know, man, but seems hey, look, if, if it happened, it happened. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. That must've been really uncomfortable. I can't. I mean, I used to have hemorrhoids and I used to deadlift and powerlift and squat all the time. And I don't ever want to have that experience ever again. It's pretty much the reason why I stopped lifting weights. I just don't want to mess with hemorrhoids. Yeah, they're not money. Uh, They're not money at all. Uh, All right, so hold on. Let me figure this out. Now, what did the commission say to you? What did Bellator say to you after they waved it all off? Well, they were were all cool about it. You know, their response was, look, dude, this thing sucks. Um, And... uh, you know, it's unfortunate that it was such a, a fizzle, but, um, you know, we, we understand it was unintentional. I, I don't think anybody except for a couple of ignorant fools on the Internet thought it was intentional, that I was trying to get out of a fight or something like that. Wait, but, wait, did, um, like, did people hit you, know, you up accusing you of this being intentional? Oh, for sure. Like, yeah, for certain. And then I go, like, not a bunch, but probably like four or five people were like, you never throw kicks, and all of a sudden you want to kick this guy in his dick. I'm like, well, I never throw kicks. Like, I'm probably the most kicking this heavyweight we have. Like, uh, I don't know any, uh, I don't even know many other heavyweights that throw kicks other than me and Krokop. But yeah, so that's, right. that's the word, brother. All right. So what did Bellator say? They, they, obviously they weren't happy, but you know, accidents do happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really, that's pretty much what it was. It was like, look, it's not awesome. We're not really happy about it, but uh, uh, you know, like you, you went out there and it, it just sucks. It was at the very first connected strike of the entire fight. 
Um, and I told him, I was like, look, man, if there's any way that he can fight tomorrow, uh, which would be Saturday, uh, or, or any situation, he's the only guy I really want to fight. Uh, I think it'd be great. I think that, uh, I think the fans really want that fight. So if we can get it and run it back really quickly, I'd do it. And then they said they didn't know if he'd be able to do it or not. And then that's when the conversation of, uh, Mar May 11th came up in Chicago. And obviously I'm from Illinois and I live in the Midwest and, uh, I feel like if I got if I got to fight Caratown up in Chicago, I'd bring a thousand people there. Um, I think it would be absolutely bananas. My hometown would would empty out, and where I live at now would empty out to come up there. So hopefully that's the case. If that situation, uh, if not, then um, you know I got some family stuff. I got uh, my mom has some issues I had to help out help her out with and help my family out with. So I think I might be wrapped up for a little while with some of that stuff. But uh, hopefully I can get back in soon. Does it have to be Caratown up? Who else makes sense for the fight? I don't know. You versus Congo would be kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I guess. But didn't they say that, that Congo earned a title shot if he beat whoever won between him and uh, um, Minikoff? Yeah, I mean, he's on an eight-fight win streak. I, I'm just saying, like, I'm thinking out loud. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what Bader's going to do. But, uh, yeah, yeah, he's supposed to be getting the next crack. But, you know, you never know with these things. You do. I agree. Let me turn this off here. Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd certainly fight Congo again. I mean, I don't think I don't think Congo really fights much at all. I think he just I think he backpedals and runs cage defense. Uh, but when I saw he was trying to, he threw my name. He had my name in his mouth this weekend when he was trying to argue with Bader. Um, but I mean, if if that's the case, I mean, I'm I'll knock I'm not Congo out. I don't mind. I mean, he runs away a lot, so I think that I think it's almost like Congo's a refresher for judges to have to remember cage control and presence and you can't cower away and run away from a fight and still, still claim to win it. I just don't think that makes sense. Um, but uh, I mean, if, Hey, if he wants to say my name out loud, I'll punch him in his mouth for it. I don't mind. So I get what do you, to do. What do you make of how, uh, uh, now that it's all over, I haven't had a chance to talk to you. I'm sure you've commented on it, but I wanted to get one here. Now that the, the heavyweight grand prix is all over, how did it go in your mind? It's a very, very complicated question, Lucas. That's why I asked um, it. I, uh, I, I was not a fan of the, of the, heavy, of the heavyweight tournament. Uh, I, uh, I, was, I was vocal about it initially. I felt like I had earned a title shot. I felt like um, uh, there should have been a situation in which, uh, or I think there could have been a situation. I think I positioned myself uh, to have a different conversation. I think that inviting light heavyweights into a tournament that's four heavyweights doesn't really make much sense at all. I think they're completely different animals. I think that they're primarily wrestlers. Um, and I think heavyweights, uh, that's the reason why Kane was so unique. That's the reason why Curtis blades is so unique, uh, because, uh, most heavyweights don't shoot, don't wrestle like that. Uh, so it's, a, it's an, a rather undeveloped skill in a lot of aspects. Um, and I think that's the reason why people like heavyweight so much, because there's not a lot of dry humping and getting another dude pregnant. A lot of it is throwing hands and and uh, and letting power speak for itself. And so I think that I was I was I was somewhat against it initially, uh, and I was against the way Bader fought me. I didn't like it. Uh, I didn't think it was I didn't think it was worthy of a heavyweight tournament uh, or heavyweight fight. But in that same breath, he came out and he knocked Fedor out faster than I did. So if Bader fought Fedor the way that he fought me, then I would have been on my podium uh, or platform talking about this was this is embarrassing and blah blah blah. But he didn't. He went out there and he threw hands and he did a great job and he he won up me. So uh, if I were salty about Bader being the heavyweight champ, then I would just be sour grapes. So I feel that Bader did a great job. He uh, if there was ever any question of him being invited to that tournament. He uh, answered them, and he vindicated uh, Mr. Coker by going out there and throwing hands and winning. Uh, and I'm proud of Bader. As a friend, I'm really happy for him. Uh, professionally, um, I guess I'm jealous because he bettered me in a skill set that I've never developed. And he did, and he won up me by knocking out Fedor faster than I did. So I'm excited. I'm happy for him. Uh, Bader stylistically is the worst matchup I could possibly have, and he uh, capitalized on it. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Are champ champs good that's for MMA? Pretty much just as honest as I can be there. No, that's a great. I really appreciate you. That's why you're on the show because you're candid, and that's what we need more of in MMA. 
um, for better or for worse. So are, are, do, you, do you think like champ champs, are they good for MMA? Is that a good thing that we're doing this? No, I don't think it is actually. Uh, it's, I think about it, right? Like I, I'm happy for those individuals. Um, but I don't, I think that classes are classes and I think that heavyweights are an animal all amongst themselves. So I think, I think there can be inter like interdivisional fights. And I think it's great for the fodder of what if for fantasy stuff, but I don't think it's great for the evolution of the sport. I don't think it is. I think it, it muddies the waters and it negates. Like, for example, if I were in Bellator, I mean, if, if I didn't lose a Bader, pretty good chance I'd have a, I'd have a title around my waist for Bellator. Uh, and I'd be, what's that? I don't know. Assuming that I didn't, that this fight never happened, I'd be 4-0 or 5-0 or something like that in Bellator now. Uh, but now I'm, I think, 4-1 and in Bellator. And my only loss is to a light heavyweight, right? So that, that still counts as a loss on my record, even though it wasn't, really a heavyweight fight, but it was because it was a light heavyweight that made heavyweight. So, I mean, it's just, I, I feel like it's just, it's, it's, it's just a totally different animal. If, uh, if, uh, if, for example, when Roy McDonald tried to fight, uh, Musasi, M Roy McDonald's not an 85 or he's a 70 year. Musasi is an 85 or that fights a 205 sometimes, but could absolutely go out there and demolish somebody like that. Cause wrestlers typically have that skill set that has been developed, whether you're an 85 or a 70 pounder or even a 205 er like I said, heavyweights typically don't have that type of defense. Now, I'm saying that, and I'm obviously biased because I never developed that skill set. It was something I didn't do in college. I was obviously not, never an All-American in wrestling, um, multiple times for that matter. And um, and I learned everything I know on the fly just coming up from the UFC. So, I, mean, I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm salty about, him, about light heavyweights being invited. And I think Bellator's tournament was exciting enough with the heavyweights that we had on the roster. I don't think we needed to add name value to it. Let me ask you this. Uh, what was this thing you put on Twitter from, I can't, I mean, this is my life. I'm out here talking about ways in which to cleanse Ball. one's genitals. Uh, Ballwash.com. So is this, so, okay, so hold on. You have these services. Quip, for example, is for teeth brushing. You got like Dollar Shave Club. And the, the thing is, they send you one, like, every so often for either, you know, uh, to wh whatever the service is. Mm -hmm. It's just this one that's renewal. You have one now? Yep. <laughs> Here we are talking about your balls. Uh, for your balls, Matt Mitrione. You know, how, how amazing, how incredibly ironic was the fact that my primary sponsor was a ball wash and I kicked it in his balls. Right, like, what kind of great advertising could Ball Wash ever have paid for? I think there should have been an incentive, like a hitter, like if you get two million views on this one, on this blip or whatever, I get extra kickers on that. So <laughs> okay, so so Ball what is Wash this? Got the best advertisement money possible. What is this? What what do you get with Ball Wash? And they're not they're not sponsoring the show. I'm just curious. Yeah, they um they send out actually you know what um they've got some really nice fragrances. For your scones. And uh, it's funny because uh, what's it called? Um, what's that? The Old Spice? Like they started running those commercials like men have skin too, you know, because not everything that smells good is just for women. Yeah. And I was like, absolutely. So this is great. So look, it's for your your balls, your your butt, and your body, baby. It's ready. This is the evolution of dude wipes, huh? You know what? Had I had dude wipes on my butt and ball wash on my junk, who was going to sponsor my chode? <laughs> i don't know that's the real question i don't you know what it remains a mystery that we will have to ponder like confucius yeah. uh we got uh, we got to find something here you know there's money well, to be made that's prime real estate baby <laughs> all right i can't top that matt we got to keep the show moving i hope you get back out there soon stop kicking people in the balls matt mitrione I'll do what I can, brother. Hey, I promise it was un unintentional. And if Karatanov can get down uh, or, or, or finds it in his heart to fight me again, I'd really appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, I boys. Know, I know it was an accident. Thank you, Matt. Really appreciate it.